McVeigh here. I've got a simple tutorial to share with you today on how to tie a basic bow and a basic knot using paper trays stitched ribbon. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to show you how to tie a bow and a knot, but I'm also going to do that uh, in conjunction with making a card today. So to get started, I've got a piece of Raspberry Fizz cardstock here that I have already cut and scored to make a standard A2 sized card. That's four and a fourth inches by five and a half. And I'm going to add a piece of, um, this is melon berry uh, pattern paper from the melon berry pattern pack. This is the striped paper. And I've just trimmed a bit off either side. I've got a little bit of an edge here that I wanna trim off that pattern paper and now let's get to the bow tying I've got some melon berry saddle stitch ribbon here um, I always leave the ribbon on the spool to tie my bows and I will show you or I'll explain why here in just a little bit to start off I always take the the long end and I wrap it under whatever it is I'm tying it around. In this case, I'm going to tie a bow around the front of the card. So I wrap it under, and I pull this, the left, my left hand is holding this side here. And then the, the part that's still attached to the spool comes over and up above. So now I've switched hands. My left hand is holding the right side. My right hand is holding the left side. This left side is going to come up over the top of the, le of the right side. I'm going to tuck it under and pull. Now I've got this kind of funky bunched up part here that doesn't want to lay flat. So I'm going to take this left, take my left hand and turn that ribbon over so that now it lays flat. And now I'm going to hold with my ring finger I'm going to hold that um, ribbon in place. I'm going to make a loop here. I'm going to wrap the left side with my left hand around the loop. Poke it through. I'm just going to pull gently for a second there. If I were to pull really hard right now, I would totally put creases on the sides of the ribbon there. And I don't want to crease those loops. I want them to stay nice and poofy. So I'm going to stick my fingers in the loops and with my my first my index fingers are going in the loops. My thumbs and second fingers are going to hold on to the tails and now I'm going to start adjusting. I'm going to pull I pulled the loops tight and now you can see I've got one that's too long and one that's too short. So I'm going to kind of keep adjusting back and forth keeping my fingers in those loops. Pull tight till I get everything situated just how I want it. Now, my personal preference is to have the loops going this way and the tails going this way. It's like a little X. If you would prefer to have your loops pointing down and your or your loops pointing up and your tails pointing down, you can totally do it that way. It's personal preference. It's completely up to you, but I like to do mine this way, so I'm going to get them exactly the way I want them. You kind of have to fiddle with it a little bit. And once I've got everything just right, then I'm ready to cut the ribbon. I'm going to cut on a diagonal here. I always cut on a diagonal so that the ribbon won't fray so much. If you cut straight, you're likely to end up with frayed edges. If you cut on a diagonal or if you cut a little V, uh, you'll prevent the ribbon from fraying. I'm going to cut the other side here, and now you can see why I leave the ribbon on the spool, because this is the only waste that I have. If I had tried to guesstimate, I just pulled off a piece of ribbon and tried to guess how much I would need, I might end up with too short of a piece of ribbon for the bow that I wanted, or I would end up with ribbon on both sides that I needed to cut off. By keeping the ribbon on the spool, this is the only waste that I've got, and therefore I'm able to stretch my supplies a little bit farther. 
so that's why I always leave the ribbon on the spool. Now, <clears throat> once I've got it tied, you can shift it up or down. You can spin it back and forth to get it positioned exactly where you want it to be. In this case, I'm going to be putting a matte stack 5 die cut. Cut it with this matte stack 5 die. I'm going to be putting that at the top of my post here. So the rib the top of my post. I'm sorry, the top of my card. So the ribbon I've got it situated right about where I want it. Now, in order to keep that ribbon from moving, I'm going to add just a little bit of score tape underneath the center of that bow, press it right into place. So now that ribbon's not going to go anywhere. Before you add that that score tape though, if you wanted, you could tie a, a button around the center of the knot here. Um, you can also just use some score tape and adhere a button right over the top if you'd like, but if you're going to thread the button, it's easy to just wrap the um, twine or thread underneath your knot here, tie it in place, and then you can use your score tape to stick that rib, stick the bow down. Either way, I've used some score tape to make sure the, the ribbon's not going to move. So now I'm going to take my matte stack 5 die cut, and I've got a stamp here from the matte stack 5 collection stamp set. It's this big label shape here at the top, and I'm going to use some Raspberry Fizz ink. Get that nice and inky. Line it up. Perfect. So now I'm going to take some foam adhesive got some little foam squares here. Put these on the back of the label. Peel off the paper backing. And pop it right on the front here. Next I've got a, another piece of pattern paper. This is from the Raspberry Fizz pattern pack, the Dottie pattern. And I've got one of the dies from the Beautiful Butterflies die collection. I'm going to adhere that right over the center of the label. And I'm going to use some more foam adhesive squares to do this. Because pattern paper is a lighter weight than cardstock, I'm putting more foam adhesive on the back here than it than what is actually needed because I don't want to put it on and then have like the center sag um, because the paper is a lighter weight. A little bit more foam adhesive will keep everything nice and stable and nice and level on the front of the card. And I'm also partially doing that because I'm going to put the sentiment over the top and I don't want anything to sag and look kind of funny after everything settles so got that in place and now I've got some melonberry cardstock that I've die cut with the double ended banner die this is the smaller of the two banners and I have a sentiment here from the matte stack one collection says wishing you a happy birthday. I'm going to use some melonberry ink. Line that up. And now because this is going to go over the top of the butterfly, I want it flat in the center. But I, I'm going to use some foam adhesive on either side just to help give it a little bit more stability. So we'll put a foam square on one end, some regular adhesive down the middle, 
and a foam square on the other end. That way, again, nothing ends up saggy or weird looking. Just line that up nice and straight and press it all down. And there you have it. Now before I go, I told you I would also show you how to tie a knot. And I do the same exact thing. I leave the ribbon on the spool, slide it with the tail coming out toward my left. Now obviously if you're right-handed, I'm sorry, if you're left-handed, you're going to want to reverse all of this. But I don't need as much in my hand this time because I'm just tying a knot instead of a bow. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab the right side with my left hand and pull it up. Uh, left side with my right hand, pull it up over the top. I'm going to tuck it under. Same thing if I just pull straight up. I've got this weird pucker that doesn't want to lay flat. So I'm going to flip this side with my left hand. Pull this down so that we've got a straight line here. And now that will lay flat. And now I'm going to take with my ring finger, hold that ribbon in place, take the right hand, the bottom piece up and over, tuck it under. And now this is the tricky part that you just need to practice a little bit. I'm mostly going to pull with this left, my left hand on the left side. And then I'm going to flip this piece. And what you end up with is a nice flat um, center of the knot here. I don't know why it is the way it is, but that's just how it works best. If you mostly pull with the left side, I'll do one more. We'll show you one more time. I had to practice this one a long time to get it right, but it does work most of the time. Um, okay, so left side comes up over the top. I'm going to flip with my left hand so that that lays flat. Hold it with my ring finger. Bottom comes up over the top. Tuck it through and now mostly pull with the left and then flip that piece and you get a nice flat center. And once again because I've left the ribbon on the spool cut it off. Uh, I'm only going to have this one little side as waist. Um, I'm also going to show you, Lisa Johnson taught me this a long time ago in one of her videos. If you fold the ribbon in half to snip it off, you get a really cute little V and it's a perfect, it's a perfect V rather than trying to cut both sides. So that I that was a total light bulb moment for me years ago when I first saw her do that. So there you go. Nice flat little knot. And a big poofy bow. Hopefully this tutorial has helped to make tying bows and knots a little bit easier for you. I'd love to see your take on this challenge. I hope you get a chance to play along today. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Thank you.